Everybody and welcome, welcome to another edition of Bob Z Uncut Community Views, the podcast where we promise to uh, bring it to you with integrity and respect. Plus, we're gonna keep it a hundred. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I, we have a very special guest today. I always like to say that uh, sometimes some people have the power and some people have the will. You know, like somebody like me, I, I have the will. But I don't have the power. And some people have the power. A lot of people that we know have the power, but not the will. We are, we are fortunate today to have, uh, our, as our guest on our, our show, we have someone that has the power and the will. And so that's the perfect storm. I'd like to welcome Senator Lionel Spurrell to the set. And, uh, you know, we're just, uh, we're really pleased to have you, Senator. And... I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I thank you for your service. And um, when I say something about power and will, you know, I'm not just blowing smoke. I really mean it. And so welcome to the show. Thank you so much. But I believe the power belongs to the people. I'm a, a public servant. But first of all, let me start off by first saying thank you so much for allowing me to be on the show tonight to share what input and my views to our citizens. Thank you so much for having me. Indeed. The one thing, I don't know if you remember, uh, back when I was at Tidewater Community, I know you remember, uh, we had the students, they wrote a bill. Well, a lot of people, when they came out of uh, being incarcerated, one of the things that they thought when they were filling out their job applications, and it says, uh, were you ever convicted of a felony? And uh, that, was, that was an issue. But what they didn't understand, and when I had my job, I, I guess I worked as a person that was going to uh, find employment, at the second chances for um, ex-felons, it wasn't just about the crimes that you were convicted of. A lot of times it was, it, it was about you having an arrest record. And so what we, ta what we tackled, I was teaching uh, public, uh, excuse me, political science over That's right. at, at TCC. That's right. And, and what we tackled, we tackled together, uh, it was the first class ever, first uh, college class ever to write a bill and I searched high, and I searched low, and I, and I asked everybody. I think at that time uh, you were a, a representative, and he was out of, out of Suffolk Chesapeake uh, That's representative. Right. That's right. And so I asked, I, I'm going to tell the truth, I asked everybody in Norfolk, everybody in Portsmouth, and I, and I said, Senator Spur, I can't find nobody to sponsor this legislation. And I wrote it along with my class, and Senator Spur stepped up, First year, he told me, and, and I learned something. I said, this is a master politician. He said, wait a minute, it's a budget year. That's right. <laughs> They're they not going to lose no money in a budget year. But it came right back the next year, and we got it, we got it passed. And I want to thank you for helping us out. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. So my question, my first question is, uh, if you were uh, right now, I might be challenging, challenging you to be governor, but if you were given the state of the Commonwealth right now, what would you say? Just as we are apart, almost six feet apart, I would say to our citizen, please get vaccinated. I don't know what's wrong with our citizens, especially the young folks. Get vaccinated. You can die as like everybody else. Wear your mask. It is the only way we can protect each other. Our hospitals and health care workers are stressed out. We cannot afford to break our hospitals down. I can stress enough, if I were giving a speech right today, I'm going to say, please take care of your health for yourself, for your family. Get vaccinated and wear a mask. That would be my first thing. Save yourself. Mm. Um, right now, and we've been through this, this crisis time and time again. Right now, there's a, a crisis. Uh, we, we are in crisis mode, not only with the, um, the pandemic, but... When it comes to gun violence, something that has plagued the black community, and as of late, um, a lot of community organizations are, it's, it's money out there, uh, you know, that to help organizations, grassroots organizations. So I want to uh, ask you, um, 
How can community organizations access the funds and resources set aside by federal and state agencies to help in alleviating the gun violence? Okay, now, I can't speak for a federal, but on the state level, we have already this year, we have generated, you know, put out $2.5 million to the Attorney General's Office to give to programs and another $2.5 million for that of criminal justice service who are distributing money to local government and to group community groups we're talking about now. That's a total of $5 million. Mm. 2.5, you can check and get it from the Attorney General's Office, and 2.5 went to the Department of Criminal Justice Service Program to give money out to local, these local programs. Yeah, we're going we to put that on the screen. We're going to run that yes. when we we're run it on the screen when we right. do uh, how people can. Because, okay, let's say I had an idea, and that's not a new idea, but I was thinking about uh, gun buybacks. Okay, well, that's just that's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, but, one, but, one but, thing. But the key with the buybacks, the problem you have is that a lot of folks won't turn their gun into buybacks because a lot of those guns were not purchased legally. Legal. Well, is it is it... Uh, Basically, we, we don't care where the gun came from. Just give us the gun, or are they going to do the, the, the... Well, if you have to buy in your home a very expensive gun, mm -hmm. and I would have to have that gun, and I turn it in to get money for it, oh, okay. you see, and then all of a sudden, they're going to run that print and say, this is going to belong to Mr. Bob William. And all of a sudden, it's going to come out to me. How did you get that gun? Right. But... but it, that was one of the things that they were concerned with as far as buying back. Right. Now, unless right. they say, no question asked. No questions asked. That's the only way to get some of these guns off the street. Now, I'm with that. If they said no question asked, then right. yes, I, I, I'll turn that gun in and get some money for it. Okay. But if you can tell me, I'm going to turn you, you're going to question me about it. No question asked, <laughs> yes, sir. It ain't had no bodies on it. That's, that's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sit in a spiral. <laughs> That's right. What's going on with this gun? <laughs> Don't ask me no question. Here it is. Give me my money. And I can ask a question. Thank you so much. I'm going to keep that gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I feel right. you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to belab belabor the point, but you've been a stalwart for a long time in, uh, in the community and, and, and as an elected official. Uh, what are some changes you would like to see um, locally? Done to increase the uh, voter turnout. I have already done so. I put a bill that was passed and signed by the governor, Senate right. Bill 1157. Move all November. elections, all elections about local government now, from May to November. Mm -hmm. And guess what? In my district, the city of Norfolk, I represent Chesapeake. They were really upset with me. And I'm going to tell you, this, you know, I had to be myself. Right. And right. Chesapeake is that a real low turnout in the African American community. They don't vote a lot the way they should in May. But right. they turn out in November. And we're trying to explain to them this. The Republican Party, I hope I can say it on your show, they, yeah, had a, they, had a fit. they had a fit. They had a fit. They had a fit because they know that they win in November and not in, uh, right. in, in I mean, maybe not November. And the city of Norfolk, I told oh, your member of God. city council, they were upset with me. I said, what you upset about? I said, Norfolk, I gave you all the black wars anyway. I gave you all white folks the white wars anyway. All I'm doing is just increasing the vote turnout. Right. So you got a black ward enough that it's going to stay black. It's just more people can vote in November. Well, well here's, this was, I had an issue. That, that, I mean, that, that was one oh thing. God. See, that was really important. It, 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 here's the thing. We, we, we uh, always get on people in Georgia and Texas and Florida about voter suppression. Now, I researched it. Anything you do, whether it's policy, whether it's intentional no, or unintentional, but if the result is to suppress the numbers, it's voter suppression. There's no way around it. I agree with you 100%. Now, also, sir, starting the 17th of this month, mm -hmm. early voting, you got to wait. Now, who put that bill in? Look at me. Okay. See, I told you, some people got the will. <laughs> some people. Early voting. <laughs> See, okay, but key with this, what happened was, you go fill out that for an absentee ballot. And all of a sudden, election time comes, your vote's not counted late the next day. Right. Early voting, that long line, starting the 17th of this month. Wow. I didn't, even, I didn't and know vote, it was that early. Starting the 17th, early voting. So when the, the November 
come around, you don't know how to vote. Is that for state elections, early voting, or is that for the whole state and local elections? This is state elections. Okay. Be right. for, yeah, the state election. Okay. See? So, matter of fact, I believe it's for whole, I'm going to check on that, but I know it's for November elections anyway. Right, okay? right. Well, matter of fact, it be for the state because everything can be in November anyway. Right, right. The, the okay. le- local election. <laughs> we got to, we, we ain't going to get into that right now. We, we got an election going on in oh, this Okay, city. okay. That's, what, that's right. And that was one thing. And then that also would increase turnout because you got to go to work. You go to the poll at 6 o'clock in the morning. Right. The line line is line, uh, along. You can't wait. You go to work. And then you get off from work and all, you say, hey, you say, hey, with it. you don't go and vote. This way, you can go and vote anytime. Also on Saturdays. And some localities, you can vote on Sundays. What's your excuse now for not voting? Right. Early voting, move the elections to November to make sure we have a nice turnout. Early voting, we can go and vote anytime, Saturday or Sunday. That's what I would have done, sir. Already done those two things. I, I, I followed it because I couldn't believe, and as a as a citizen of Norfolk, that was one of the first times I've ever been ashamed. As far as um, you know, when we talk about a progressive uh, thoughts and ideals, and I just knew that our elected officials would stand behind something that would increase voter turnout. I mean, it's, it, it was a no-brainer to They were me. worrying about themselves. That's what the problem was. Indeed. They were worrying about themselves. I'm saying, say, hey, I, my concern is about the people. I want to turn up, you know, right, safe. Right, right. And uh, so, uh, so I'm good to go with it now. I was shocked. Oh, okay, let's switch gears just a little bit. All right. Um, with respect to marijuana legalization, how confident are you that the uh, black community will be able to reap the financial benefits of a system that has long criminalized the uh, black community with respect to arrests and convictions uh, from the possession and use of, let's just say weed. All right, now use the word, how confident am I? Right. Take out the word, how confident. Let me tell you what the law says. All right. Tell me what okay. the law says. Tell you. It says, requires components that will address the black community being able to obtain a license to sell these products. We the Black Caucus ensure opportunities in all. What happened was this. It would have happened in 2023. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure. The first thing, you know you can get marijuana right now. Okay? Can you? <laughs> listen to me, Doc. Listen to me, Doc. See that? I'm trying to help you out. Hey, I'm trying to help you out. You Is get that right? right? See that? Now, the key this. Now, the kid, this right here, a less than an ounce, what are you going to call it? I don't smoke. But what happened was, the business-wise, mm-hmm. we were saying, no, no, we want to make sure that all the laws in place, so it must have rob up bobs, women want to get involved in this uh, stuff. Here are the laws that say, hey, follow these laws. You can open the shop like anybody else. Okay. And that's what we were concerned about, that we did not have something in place. No. They can start locking these black folks. You know that. They can lock black folks up first. You know that. Right. We want to make sure we got these laws that we are passed and look at that in place first. Then 2023, you can go in business like everybody else. And yes, it, it, has, to, it has to be fair across the board. One one of the things I learned from you was that a lot of things get done uh, on a state level uh, based on, on committees by committees. So tell me a little bit about what committees you serve on and or chair uh, in the general assembly and uh, give us in, a glimpse of what's coming in, down the in pipeline. The committee, uh, serve on what we call the powerful commercial labor. Mm-hmm. They deal with Dominion Energy, Verizon, the gas company, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, I'm the subcommittee chair of energy. Well, that is that all these energy bills from the gas company, the power company, so forth, they come before my committee. I'm the chair of the committee. That's called commerce and labor. I'm on what's called privilege in the election. Mm-hmm. That's the, the deal with the election, how it turned out. We passed laws, for example, like when I got passed by early voting. Right. Uh, when I got moved to bill to November, November. That coming before that committee is called privilege in the election. The action is called rehab. Social service, dealing with social service and stuff that deal with the correction, how we can make sure that those who are out in the streets and the correction all can get service. Transportation. Look at transportation. We have, on the Turf McCullough, who have started, that we have opened up the transportation that once you went across the Monitor Merrimack or the Hampton Turnham, how we have opened it up going towards Richmond, 
lane. We got about another 12 or 15 more miles to go to open up wide open. Now, also, we got a third quest, uh, crossing. Right. You know, take the Hampton Tunnel. Every time you go there, six miles back up, six and a half miles back up. My whole life. Oh, uh, yeah. So, but we got a third crossing. Okay, third crossing. Also, in Chesapeake, we build another bridge coming to Chesapeake. Is that going to be told? That's what they say, yes, yes. And we are saying, hey, I understand. I feel your pain. I live in Chesapeake. I got to pay for that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. all that won't be. And also, we are saying that now for transportation, we got to get rid of those darn toes. Why can't I got to leave from North and go to the tunnel and go to Portsmouth and anywhere else? We're working on that as well. Mm. So with that, and transportation, P&E, local government, local government, same thing as, as uh, city council. Okay. See, so that's what that is. We deal on, on local issues. And I'm on the subcommittee chairman of ch all the city charters. Okay, but well, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. Love First Marriage Movement, where we work with couples virtually all over the world to transition from a place of pain to genuine peace and resilience from the inside out. We help them by sharing our own marital rags to marital bliss journey. Check us out at lovefirstmarriagemovement.com. I'm Hala Ayala. My story is a Virginia story. Night shifts, minimum wage, pregnant with no health care. But with a little help and a lot of hard work, I built a career and a middle class life. So when I got to Richmond, I made it my mission to ensure hardworking Virginians have that same opportunity. As Lieutenant Governor, I'll build on that record to attract more good paying jobs so every family thrives. Welcome to Comedic Services, LLC. We provide supportive in-home and residential group home services in the Hampton Roads area, including Williamsburg, Franklin, Zunai, Joanno, and Southampton County. Our offices are located at 2428 Almeda Avenue, Suite 170 in Norfolk, Virginia, and at 601 North Mechanic Street in Franklin, Virginia. Comedic Services, LLC is a commission on accreditation of rehabilitation facilities, CARF, accredited service. Our motto is fostering a culture of service and advocacy for humanity. Every time my children walk out the door, I hold my breath. What if they encounter the police? We had the talk and I prayed they listened. But as a mom, the worry never goes away. So as a leader in Richmond, I demanded transparency and accountability from law enforcement, requiring body cameras, banning no knock warrants. So no matter what you look like or where you live, every Virginia family should feel safe. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Um, one of the things that you were just talking about, uh, I wanted to ask you about, you said you served on the, uh, the labor. The, the labor was one of the committees. No, 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 uh, uh, local government, transportation, commerce and labor. Commerce, commerce and, labor. and labor, right, okay. okay. I know that a, a bill recently was passed that would allow collective bargaining. Now, the way it's set up now, I'm, I'm, I know in, uh, in this jurisdiction, in this city, it's, it's a horrible, it's a horrible thing for the city employees. I've actually experienced, um, experienced that firsthand. Uh, some of the abuses of, of, of a municipality that's kind of just run wild when it comes to uh, how they treat their employees, some of the most valued employees. And so um, with the advent of the opportunity to um, engage in collective bargaining, uh, I, it's, I, I hear that there's some obstacles to, as far as how that bill was written. Any, what do you okay, think about now that? Remember, Virginia is a right to work state. Right. And so what happened was that particular bill you're talking about. Then if we said, well, hey, okay, then but we gave the, the local government mm -hmm. to right, to negotiate with with the employees and all because until we in the general assembly, until we pass a bill and say, hey, is that the local government across the state can negotiate with the the, the police department, mm -hmm. or the service service, or the dump department, what have you. Until that happened, 
That's the only way it can really happen is that we got to change that law to work the right state to allow the unions to meet with the employees and employers, allow them a chance to work it out. If you don't do it that way, I don't care what you're trying to fix it because every time that the union have uh, an advantage, one inch advantage, then they go back and say, well, we are working the right state. We don't have to. We're just trying to be nice to you, let y'all to come in and do it or something. Right. So until we change the law to allow the union like other states to bother with the union all across. Close shop. Do. That's right. Right. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about the upcoming upcoming gubernatorial race here in the Commonwealth. I believe that uh, you've always, you know, since I've known them to, to be in public service, you've always voiced your uh, support for former Governor Terry McAuliffe. Uh, can you let the viewers know, uh, some people who may be viewing, why should we support him? Okay, first of all, Terry McCullough has given more rights. I'm talking about the black folks now, it's the white folks too. More rights to more blacks than any, put all of them put together, mm -hmm. including those who were out of jail, who have been 40 and 50 years that couldn't get a job because they had that. Terry had that done. Terry also has brought more business to this state, okay? And he has also made sure that the police department was involved in making sure that all our citizens were treated fairly. Right. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm forget about the things he had done as far as bills. I'm concerned, as far as black folks concerned, that he has increased the job for us. He has making sure that we have all our rights restored for us. He also... Um, Expungement, a lot of blacks have been expungement on certain things. Before he got into office, you can go into the governor's office, three and four feet stacks. No one never touched people who asked to have their rights restored or have their rights to expungement. Right, I remember. So on, where he got the stuff down. So to me, as far as he has done more for Commonwealth Virginia that made it the best state in the country to be, do business with. Okay. Well, a lot of business to us. And with that, that became jobs. And with the jobs, when these new companies came in the job, came to our state, he made sure that the minority, I hate for a person to call me a minority, but they make sure that the minority had a certain percentage of jobs like everybody else. So I'm saying for our folks and other stuff, he has done, that's fine. But I'm talking about what he has done for us. Okay. And now, so, so he's running again. He has a proven record who has done it, and he has a candidate. A high yala, uh, who is running for lieutenant governor? She's in the House of Delegates. I've been knowing her for a she's while. She's great, and yeah. then she had this uh, lady won some seals. The uh -huh. Republican running, won some seals, got a, a AK, what uh, AK? What do you know what to call? Assault rifle, yeah, and saying right. that she was the leading person to support Donald Trump. Yeah. You know you came up for that woman. Yeah, I've never, I've never been a fan of hers ever. Yeah, um, okay. What, but. Okay, so uh, I know how you might feel about this, but I'm, we, 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 this is where we're probably going to, uh, our paths are going to diverge in the woods. You don't know that. I don't know that, but let's see. Um, uh, federal judges, I mean uh, state judges. I did the research. Virginia is only one of 17 states right. that still appoints its judges. Uh, it makes no sense, to, absolutely no sense to me as a no. person. Okay. Um, that I think that, you know, just as far as accountability, we need to elect our judges just like we elect anybody else because we, that's the only way we're going to get a fair representation of, of, of sometimes, let's say a judge is appointed. They don't live in the neighborhood they come and, and serve in. They don't live the way they come and lock people up. They don't know anything about that community. They could, they could come from anywhere just by a group of people, you know, anointing people. I, I don't get it. What you think? All right. Now, first of all, when you appoint a judge in Norfolk, he has to live in Norfolk. Previously or after? Now, now. Okay. Right. You appoint a judge, I'm talking about on, on state level. For example, like, now, also, since I'm the chairperson now because the Democrats in control okay. of Norfolk Chesapeake, I'm putting our folks on the bench. Okay. Check it out. The key with this right here because I like this system. Because this, if you put some judges who, for people who don't look like us may not be fair, and they got to be elected statewide, mm -hmm. 
You well, think they're looking out for black folks? I Come think, on. I think that they should be elected uh, based upon districts, just like the uh, okay, General right. Assembly people okay. are. All right. Okay. Well, uh, now, in that case, then, but this, when we appoint judges, now, mm-hmm. we have to be interviewed by the Bar Association and half the whole delegation get together. Right. We appoint judges. We also let our citizens know, I do, put it by me now. Our citizens know, hey, this is who want to come up. How this guy come? I have a town hall meeting. Say, hey, what's the Williams? You have any? You ever have any friend that go before the, the court in Chesapeake or Norfolk before this judge? He wants to be elevated. Mm. Uh, in your opinion, how this guy? How does he act? See, I, I don't look at the resume. Anybody can do a good resume. I, I can make your resume make me president of the United States. I know I'm not qualified, so I want to know exactly the guy's background, what he has done. And how he's serving on the bench now, and as a lawyer, and so forth. So I favor this sister. But if the community says to me, "Bro, I'm from my district. We want to have an elected. I will follow my community." Breaking news. <laughs> what could I say? You heard it here first. <laughs> what could I say? What could I say? If, if my if the community wants elected judges, <laughs> if I'm no, I say my district. Your my district, right. okay. Well, you not my man right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if my people say, that's it. I don't care what the white folks say. If my people, people say, I don't care. Well, if my people say, my that's the one I do it. <laughs> no problem with that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, thank you. All right, we got some breaking news. All right, now. That's breaking. breaking news, right? That's breaking news. Right. You're the only senator in the whole Commonwealth that's even willing to, I guess because in, in a sense they look at like seeding power. But the only senator that I've talked to in the entire state of Virginia that's even willing to think about it. I'm never going to run for governor because I'm too damn crazy. <laughs> okay? I'm never going to run for governor. So I'm going to say, and I represent my folks. Right. I know who put me in office. Okay? I will do right by them. Even though, and I do make mistakes sometimes. We but all my do. folks say, Spruill, this is what we want. I'm going to do it. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's talk. Um, um, census and redistricting uh, with the Democrats in control of both state houses how do you feel it will affect uh, how the new districts will be drawn and are, are we going to go all out and correct the evils of the past or are we just going to nitpick at all we going to try to get all our stuff back the Democrats were crazy <laughs> they were crazy and I'm part of it were crazy we had the power and we gave it up to do a fair election because other folks who were concerned that mm-hmm. they want to make sure that, that we didn't do a fairly. They were saying, you impact the district to have all these, all these delegates. If you didn't have the way it is now, you wouldn't have no black folks in the General Assembly, mm-hmm. but a few. Okay? Now, so the way it is this. Before Senator Miller became in, all right? So I'm this as far as district-wise. Mm-hmm. So now we are trying to draw a line. They have a committee who has drawn the line. They have no idea where I live. They're going to draw the line based on proportion of what they see fit. Mm. So the, the, we got one di- alignment drawn right now. Got Senator Lucas and Spruill in the same district. So who going to run for that? That's, that that's, that's, that's one drawn. So you see? That's so I'm going to keep this right here. My concern, I have said it, mm-hmm. my concern that I want to make sure 50 years from now, when my great grandchildren go to Richmond, they can see some black folks walk in the hall, not look on the wall. Mm-hmm. You come in my office right now, since 1887 and 1888, you got 13 blacks, and they served one year, one year in Virginia General Assembly, and the white folks got rid of them. Then from that time to 1965 or 66, you had to uh, refocus from from um, Richmond, all that time. Wow. You see, and then you got Senator Miller for all that time. I remember that. So my saying, hey, my concern, I said to him, listen, don't do it. We got the power. Power is taken and it's not given. Don't do it. And now we're in a sham right now because you got folks joining this for us. I don't know where my district can be. Wow. All I said, I said it and on the floor. My concern was to treat everybody right, treat everybody fairly. But I want to make sure that when I leave Richmond, some black folks are in the General Assembly. Okay, okay. We've been talking to Senator Lionel Spiro of the Commonwealth of Virginia, state senator. Uh, we're going to be back. Uh, we're going to have to go pay a couple of bills, sponsors and everything. We'll get right back at you. Yeah. 
Love First Marriage Movement, where we work with couples virtually all over the world to transition from a place of pain to genuine peace and resilience from the inside out. We help them by sharing our own marital rags to marital bliss journey. Check us out at lovefirstmarriagemovement.com. Welcome to Comedic Services, LLC. We provide supportive in-home and residential group home services in the Hampton Roads area, including Williamsburg, Franklin, Zunai, Tuano, and Southampton County. Our offices are located at 2428 Almeda Avenue, Suite 170 in Norfolk, Virginia, and at 601 North Mechanic Street in Franklin, Virginia. Comedic Services, LLC is a commission on accreditation of rehabilitation facilities, CARF, accredited service. Our motto is fostering a culture of service and advocacy for humanity. Okay, we're back. Uh, with Senator Lionel Spiro, well, state senator for the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's 5th District, right? That's right. 5th District. Okay. Uh, well, we just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, something, switching gears a little bit more. Uh, gun safety laws. Uh, where are we at? I know it was, it was for the first time ever in history, there was a little bit of movement made on it. What do you think is coming down the pipeline? How's, how's everything looking with that? That's a uh, term of color for has um, the agenda for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't have one. He has one for that, and he is waiting that he will meet with the, the, the caucus after the uh, election. He has one there. So but as far as, guns, as far as laws with guns, I don't think, and my personal thing, I don't think I want to make sure that Everyone who has a gun that is purchased legally. Right. Uh, that's number one. Mm. I think we should get all these guns off the street. These kids that got guns off the street or have got them, somehow, excuse me, we got to get them off the street. Okay, well, you can help me with my gun buyback. $100, $200 Walmart and Target gift certificates. I support East, that, provided you don't East. ask me where I got the gun from. Okay, no questions asked. Because no you know, Bob. <laughs> Not you, because you're a good guy. Right. But just suppose you got a gun that was stolen, a gun that was used by somebody, and they you turn that gun in to give my two hundred dollars, and they check it out. Hmm, swim. This gun was used to shoot somebody. Where you get that gun from? Okay. No question. Ask no question. Give me my money. Okay. I give you the gun. And, and my goal is to get a thousand guns off the street. So. That's, well, I'm going to talk to you later off the line. I want a thousand, I'm going to take a thousand guns off the street before the end of the year. All right. And so that's my goal. So we're going we're gonna to hold that in, you know. Well, what, Sam, what, but don't lock up our folks because they turn their gun in no, it's, and they start asking the question. They, they, go, they go straight to be melted down. They, go, they turn in the gun, they melt the guns down. No questions asked. All right. Okay. All right. So um, what else? What is, uh, I've noticed, and, and, and <laughs> I want to try to get Mr. Uh, 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 excuse me, Governor, former Governor, Governor McAuliffe on my show too. So I'm gonna talk offline with you about that. But I will, I will be with him Sunday. You'll be with him Sunday. I have, I have him give you a call. So can we work it out? That's great. That would be great. This guy, I don't even know this guy. This Trump dude, uh, Glenn Youngkin or something. He he getting some money from somewhere uh, to see a lot of commercials that he's doing. No. He's not from nowhere. He is rich like you. He got a lot of money. He is rich, rich, rich. So he had my money. He'll jump out so of money. So, no, no. So, he's not nowhere. He, the Republican Party mm -hmm. is putting a lot of money in his race. Mm -hmm. They also put a lot of his own personal money. Mm -hmm. He is a multi, 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 multi. Right. So, right. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's where his money coming from. But he still, he still seems like a Trump guy to me. I, I, don't, I don't know about his ideology, ideology, but I'm like, I ain't messing with him. Okay, so uh, we got about one more question, and, and basically, uh, I'm gonna let you tell us what's co what's coming up down the line, and what what should we be looking out for? What we should be looking out for, first of all, local government. I am asking citizens in my district, just picking up for put a person in office that can represent you. Right. I have my choice who I support it. Mm -hmm. But I don't live in Norfolk, so I'm not going to beat the drum. But you have folks in Norfolk who have been beating the bushes for years over for here. For years, yeah. Let's see. And they say, but it's wrong to put a person that you don't know. Mm. You put somebody in office. But what about those who've been out in the, working in the quarry for years? Right. And put them because they are public servants. Mm -hmm. 
not just to look pretty. Right. We are concerned about the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the attorney general. We were saying this. We are saying Terry McCullough has proven leadership. In the Senate, we need Hala Ayala because in the Senate, when it's tie tie, we need a Democrat to break ties our way. Right. And see, because right now, the Senate is 21 19, 21 Democrats, 19 Republicans. But every now and then, mm-hmm. some Democrat go crazy. Right. Make it 20 20. We want to make sure that that's happening. Okay. So we are asking our folks to please go out and vote. In November, Norfolk, look at the candidates. Look at all the candidates. Look at who has been a public servant. That's who you reward. I truly believe is that those who have been out there working for you all these years, and now whoever it is, when they pop up, they deserve your vote. Okay. You have been listening to Bob Z. Uncut Community Views, uh, the podcast where we bring it to you with integrity, and honesty, and we're going to keep it a 100. <laughs> I got to say that. I like saying that. But we're going to uh, always bring it to you uh, uncut. Uncut. And so our, our guest today has been our Senator Lionel Spurl from the 5th District, Senator, State Senator for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I want to thank you for listening. Remember to go to YouTube and subscribe. Okay? Talk to you next week. <laughs>